Hey, hello guys. This is Karthik from ExitAutomation.com. This is part 16 of our Coded UI video series. So in this part, we are going to start understanding the parent-child relationships in web applications and why do we really require them. So before starting this part, I would request you to watch part 15 since this part is going to be a continuation of that part. So web application controlled relationships. So in the last part, which is nothing but the part 15, we discussed hand coding web application in CoderDY testing and also we face some problem while trying to identify a control of next page which was the user form page. So the problem was every time while identifying a control from next page we were needed to re-identify the browser window and HTML document as a parent of the control within the page. So the hierarchy of identifying any given control was this. So to identify a HTML edit control, the parent was HTML document and the parent of HTML document was a browser window. So this was the hierarchy that we maintained. So the relationship is very important and the core concept of identifying a control of code or UI testing. So you can also see the relationships of the control in UIMap.UI test as shown below. As you can see, there is a browser window and within the browser window, we have two HTML documents. So within one HTML document, we have three controls and there is one custom control as well. And similarly, within another document, we have other controls which is available in the next page. So let's flip back to Visual Studio and see how we discussed in the last part and how these relationships are maintained so that you can get a crisp idea of what I really talk about in the next upcoming slides of these videos. So this is the same project which we worked in the last video of this video series. So here we have created a browser window. So this is the new browser window and within this browser window we have some search property to identify the browser and then there is a HTML document and the parent of the HTML document is a browser window. Right? And this is the HTML edit text box. The parent of this HTML edit text box is the document as you can see here right so this is the relationships which is maintained in our coded UI testing so why do we really need the relationships in coded UI testing so before answering this question let's take our most popular browser automation testing tool selenium so if you are familiar with selenium then this code is going to be a cakewalk for you if you are not familiar with selenium then don't hesitate to watch the Selenium tidbits video of this channel and also the Selenium framework design and development video series of this channel. You can understand the Selenium completely. If you want some more code snippets and other information regarding Selenium, you can just go to exitautomation.com and search for Selenium articles right there. So what I'm going to do right now is I have created a simple code snippet here. You can see there is a web driver instance and then I have created a simple method actually this code I have written using Java right so you can see there is a driver instance variable and I'm creating a new Firefox driver and then to identify a control I'm using the same driver instance and using find element method of the driver instance variable I am finding the control using its name and then I'm getting that value in the web element interface and then I'm performing a send keys of exit automation into that particular text box and then I'm using the same driver instance variable to identify the button and then perform a click operation in that so the above code snippet leaves us with the following questions where is the relationship of the control maintained here how does Selenium manage to identify the controls in the page? Since you can see here, we have not maintained any parent-child relationship as we did in the coded UI testing. It just identify everything using the driver.find element. But as you can see in the code snippet, we are first creating the instance of the web driver. And then using this instance, we are finding all the controls and also performing the operation there. 
Thus, in the Selenium, the relationships of identifying each and every controls are by default maintained using the instance of the web driver. Needless of where the browser takes the page, the web driver has the handle for every control. Hence, they require no relationships, right? So you are playing the identification of the control itself using the instance of the web driver. So you don't have to explicitly specify who is his parent. It's all there in the instance itself, right? But this is not in the case of our Visual Studio. We are fully isolating each and every parts and everything here is a movable parts. But we have to specify explicitly that, hey, HTML edit, this guy is your parent. So the browser is your parent. Similarly, the document is your parent. We have to explicitly specify in code or UI testing, whereas this is not the case in our Selenium. So the relationship in code or UI testing is completely a parent-child relationships. So now the question is, do we really require to re-identify both the browser window and HTML document every time? So to answer this question, let's do some research in Visual Studio Code and see how we can cheat a little and then start identifying the control without using the HTML document. So let's flip back to Visual Studio. All right. So what I'm going to do right now is, so now you can see that there is a HTML document class and we have identified this HTML document using its parent window, browser window. And the title is execute automation here, right? The same is actually used even for this guy, which is available in the next page. So the document, the both the documents available here are having the same property, right? So why do I really require a duplicate property? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat a little bit here I'm going to just comment this thing out and instead of this document I'm going to identify it directly using the browser window as we did in Selenium so what in Selenium we do is we directly identify each and every control using the driver instance the driver is nothing but the Firefox web driver or your Chrome driver or IE driver so similarly I'm going to do the same thing here in Visual Studio as well so I'm going to comment this document completely out and I'm going to play fully with the browser window. All right. So let's give a comment here. Re-identify the control for the browser. Great. So now I have completely removed the or commented out the HTML document. So let me try to just run the thing and see if it really identifies the controls. Okay, it identified the first one, but the next is the important one. Can you see that? It typed the initial KK right here. Even I have removed the HTML document in both the pages, right? And the just got passed. So how is Visual Studio managing to identify the controls which is available in the next page and also in the present page without having the HTML document control property? That's a very important question. So now you can understand that without having or without using the HTML document itself, Visual Studio can manage to identify the control. So the document is completely not required. So I'm going to delete this thing out and also these lines all right so now we have to shrink the code a little bit but now you you will have the next question I just caught what question you have why do I re-identify this browser why can't I just remove this guy and start working from there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this guy out right and then if I try to run this I bet you that this code will never work So it opened the browser, it typed and hit the login there. And it should type KK in the initial, but it won't. So 
See, it got failed. The reason is, let's take a close look at the application itself. So what it's doing is, it's typing Karthik here and hitting the login button. But now you can see that the URL is the different one compared to the first URL. So it's taking me to the next page altogether, right? But now you have not specified anywhere in the code of UI testing in your custom code that this control is available in the next page. So there is no means that you are specifying that the browser window has actually changed or the browser has navigated to the next page. You have not specified anywhere here, which is pretty much important. Whereas in Selenium, we keep track of them using the driver's instance. But here in CodoDY, we are not actually doing that. So that's why we need to re-identify the browser each and every time in CodoDY testing, right? So any framework, if you take, which is written in CodoDY, some of the customized CodoDY frameworks are actually available like Qt and some of the other frameworks which will simplify you to write some of the large code that you're writing right now. All these frameworks use the same pattern to work with different pages, which is nothing but identifying or re-identifying the browser window each and every time while the browser navigate to the next page, right? All right. So this code should be there. If this code is not available, then surely the code is not going to work out. All right. But now, instead of writing code like this, I have just written some more codes here. I've already written it actually, so that you can more innovatively write that code and you can string this code as well. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to string this code by first writing some of the properties like this. So what I'm going to do is, so this is the code which I've already written. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a private property called browser window. And this is going to be my property m parent window. And in this parent window, I'm actually going to call one method called as parent window, right? Top parent window. So this top parent window is nothing but this code. So I'm going to paste this guy right here. So let's take a close look at the top parent window, what it actually does. So as usual, what you do here, you're going to create a browser window instance. And also you're going to search for the name here, right? So what if tomorrow the name changes from execute automation to execute automations or execute automation v2.0 or v2.3. So this name is going to be dynamically changing each and every time. So you cannot make this as a hard coded value. So instead of doing that, I'm going to call a property which is available in browser window, which is nothing but the current browser. So while it opens, the current browser is going to be the open browser, right? So it's going to take the current browser class name using this guy, this property, current browser, right? So I'm going to assign this guy. And I'm going to return the window, the browser window here. So this is what this method actually does. And within this browser, win within this parent window property, what I'm doing is I'm trying to see if this parent window, the, the value which we assigned here, this property is a null. So if it is null, so the first time it's going to be null, of course. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the top parent window for this property, right? And it's going to return me this property. That's it. It's just a get value. There is no setter here for this particular property. That's it. And then what I'm going to do is I don't require this code anymore. So I'm going to just delete this guys. So instead of browser window, I'm going to use the property parent window right so this is going to be a very very meaningful name right now and also I don't have to re-identify of course we I, I have to re-identify this so not re-identify 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this m parent window is equal to I'm going to set this guy as null. So if I set this value as null, this is going to again call me this top parent window method, right? Then I'm going to call the parent window once again. That's it. So this code is going to be more meaningful right now. So I'm just going to call the parent window. So if you want to see, so it is little encapsulated here since the parent window if you're going to see what it is then it's going to be this property and then what this property is going to do is going to call this top parent window so it is very generic right now so while writing frameworks in code or UI testing you can actually use these concepts right so let me try to run this code and see how thing works so I'm going to hit the run selected test in the test explorer so this should open me the browser it opened and it should type the name all right and it should type me the initial there so it's waiting for 4,000 seconds. That's why it's delaying. Do you see how fast it is? Do you see how fast it is? It just performed the operation as expected. Great. All right, it just got passed. So this is how we can write the code for a web application using code.ui testing. And this code is very, very simple right now since you have did a lot of steps and you have also tried to create a small reusable code which can be used across your project. All right, guys. So this is why we require the relationship between each and every controls as opposed to one which is available in Selenium. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.